Welcome, good morning LinkedIn. I couldn't be more excited to announce that Microsoft has released on, on pre-order their new Azure V3 Connect camera system, which offers these new integrations to the Azure cloud and perception and cognitive-based services, but also it integrates the new one megapixel depth sensor that is in the HoloLens 2.0. Let's take a look at that hand tracking real quick. So you can kind of see here in the new HoloLens 2.0, we know there's 25 point hand tracking and thanks to Jesse McCullough, he's confirmed maybe later this month, I may get to try one out or even procure one. Very excited about that. So what are the major differences between this new Azure sensor and the old Connect V2? Obviously, aside from the three to four year span uh, that we've been utilizing this old time of flight uh, class one laser system, the new Azure camera is three times more resolute uh, versus the old system. And also it doesn't rely on drivers. But that means that it's not backwards compatible. So the old SDK and the new SDK, if you have um, applications, you're gonna have to tweak something in, in, in order to integrate that. But the, the exciting part about that is you can add new Azure um, you know, perception or cognitive abilities to those old programs. Very, very exciting. What you see behind me is the de uh, depth kit um, software application. They've now uh, integrated support for the new Azure sensor. This is actually a stream from the new uh, from the old V2, and then on this side is the body tracking SDK. So for the body tracking SDK on the Azure base sensor, you're gonna need to sign up for an NVIDIA developer account and then download the CUDA DNN 64 underscore seven dot DLL, and that'll be in, under a bin file, and you need to associate that in the environmental parameters field, and that's gonna run on Onyx uh, deep neural networks. So you can kind of see this, the body tracking here is really incredible, but one of the other things that I think is just transformative is if, it, if your body is occluded, right, because it's colorizing your body, my legs are occluded, but it is still assigning the skeletal tracking positioning to my legs, even though I can't see it. That's amazing. And, and uh, next, we're going to go through the SDK, and I'm going to go through bin versus unbin, the wide field, view, field of view versus narrow field of view. And uh, this, again, is an open source platform, so you can take this code and kind of input it into your, into your own programs and applications. Um, and I believe they're going to release a C-sharp wrapper in the future. Right now, the SDK is on a C API for Windows and Linux. If you're running win Windows and you are not able to get the camera to recognize, uh, I, I've kind of identified a workaround here in Linux because it's not, it's not looking for container-based IDs. In Linux, it only looks for serial numbers. So try setting up a virtual machine on your Windows uh, with Linux uh, via an Ubuntu or whatever, and then you can you will be able to see that serial serial number versus the container IDs and the USB host controllers. Um, I hope that helps. I think somebody on LinkedIn had an issue with connecting it with yesterday, so I wanted to, I wanted to discuss that. But again, one of the other things that you can do that do with this particular sensor is it has seven individual mic arrays for cognitive services. That 12 megapixel RGB camera. It has digital accelerometers and gyroscopes, which can be um, you, you can go out and retrieve that information at two to three thousand hertz, uh, which is just far uh, far and above many of the other uh, digital accelerometer gyroscopes on the market. Um, and then the cool part about this is they, they listen to the developer community by implementing these external sync pins. And why is that important? Because in the past, if you wanted to set up multi-camera systems, you either needed a checkerboard or some other calibration uh, you know, based system to get that working. Now it's integrated in the SDK. So you just have to plug in these three, uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo cables in the back and then set up one as a master and the rest as, as slaves. And so it'll synchronize those frame captures. And then that's, that's essentially if you want to create this 3D point cloud or these memory bubbles as, I, as, I, as I've been calling them for, for many, many months now. So that's really exciting. I'll show you guys that. I'm going to do a series of videos on this sensor over the next few months, going into everything and even creating sample applications. So very, very cool stuff. Um, but let's, let's jump into the SDK now so I can show you what that looks like here. Uh, you've obviously seen the body tracking. So this is, you know, this body tracking, the features on this are, it's gonna provide that body segmentation, which we've seen in the past, that's fantastic. Uh, but it also contains uh, these, these anatomically correct skeleton uh, for partial full bodies in, in the field of view. And then you can track multiple bodies at the same time. I believe right now it's between five and ten. That may be increased over time. Um, if you can, in, you can, in, in, you can pull in um, individual body tracking tools from the Azure cloud for machine learning and segmentation and computer vision. All of those things are actually already programmed and very, very easy to just plug them in. Uh, and, and we'll go through that in future videos. So let's jump into the SDK, and then I'll show you guys what this looks like. All right.
Hello and welcome back to the Azure Connect viewer and SDK 1.1.0, which is released on GitHub um, as of today. So let's go through uh, some of the differences in the depth camera versus near field of view, uh, bend and unbend, wide field of view, bend and unbend. And, and what bend modes really mean is the bend modes mean less jitter and extended range, but a lower resolution. So it, it depends on your application. Sometimes you may not need a higher resolution um, in, in certain types of robotics applications, but I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the color configurations, BGRA, um, MJPEG, MB12, and YUY2. Um, the resolutions as well from you know, 16 by 9, 720 to 2160, 4 by 3, 1536 to uh, 3072. And then some of the frame rates, the maximum frame rates is 30 frames per second. Um, you can disable that streaming LED if you don't wanna see that little white LED in the front. Uh, you can en en enable the IMU, uh, the gyroscope and accelerometer so you can see that information. The, uh, the seven array mic and uh, the internal and, ex and internal and external sync information so you can delay this. We discussed this previously where you can actually link multiple cameras together so you can get a 360 degree 3D point cloud um, you know, captures, you can output that to various mixed reality headsets or virtual reality environments or teleportation, holoportation, uh, uh, telepresence, and, and just so many other applications um, that this, this, this currently offers. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look and, and start this right now. So let's go ahead and get this started so you guys can see what that bin mode does. So you have a little bit less jitter uh, in the upper left-hand corner. You'll see the, the passive infrared image right here uh, to my left and then the color RGB uh, 4K camera there. You'll see the accelerometer um, right here and then you'll see the gyroscope and then the seven channel mic array. So this bin mode right here, let's, let's unclick this and so you guys can see what unbend mode looks like in the same configuration. So we'll go ahead and wide field of view bend. Let's go unbend mode. It's gonna cap that at um, 15 frames per second. Again, it's gonna lower the frames per second, but increase the resolution. And let's start that so you guys can see what that change looks like. A little bit um, higher resolution image, but again, lower uh, frame rates. And, uh, and let's go ahead and jump into a 3D capture point cloud. I know a lot of you actually wanna see this. And this is at 2160p, 16 by nine. So, as we initialize this, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. You can see a couple different options here from simple um, and then shaded and to the colorization of the point cloud and we'll go ahead and zoom in. So let me go ahead and zoom in on this. You right click to move this up and position it accordingly. And let's just set it there. Let's go back into shaded. Perfect, and let's go down to one. I personally like this one just a little bit better. So this is that point cloud generation from the a new Azure uh, V3 Connect camera. And it's just night and day compared to V2. So many exciting opportunities around the world. I'm very focused on fitness and healthcare. And I know it, 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 there were so many different types of applications for Connect V2, which would be just kind of brought into the V3. Um, but this is a very brief overview of everything we've had so far. I wanted you guys to be able to see how this looks and how it interacts. This is the first of the new depth cam um, series on the Azure. Um, camera system. Uh, again, I, I intend to create anywhere between 10 and 20 videos um, outlining basic applications for this, just for body and skeletal tracking, um, in, in, in logistics and manufacturing and, and, and shipping and so many others um, within the next few months. So I want you guys to reach out to me and let me know what you want to see, what your interests are. If you have current developments and you're, and you're hitting a bottleneck, reach out to me and and let me know how I can help you guys. I would gladly do so. That's why I'm on this platform is to help empower you and educate and share my knowledge with the world freely. Um, I, I think as more people do that, it builds up this foundational knowledge for so many people to become masters at a very low cost barrier, right? Instead of going to spend so many thousands of dollars in classes around the world, you can just log in into these kinds of educational series, these, this, this knowledge library, um, it, you know, and you couple that with information like the, the Microsoft Build Conference, which I'll link in this video underneath. I've watched it several times now. That's helped me understand the ecosystem and platform and vision so much better than I understood it before. Um, so thank you to Jesse McCullough. Thank you to Microsoft for sending me the sensor. Um, and thank you all for always tuning into this channel and providing just the most valuable feedback in the world. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.